Hello Gothic friends, this is Alice and you are in Gothic Land, a place where we talk and learn about all things Gothic. First of all, I want to thank you all for your comments, your words, your subscriptions, for all the effort for sharing the videos with other people, with your friends. I am really, really grateful for that because this way we can all learn more about something that is not very well known. So I was thinking for today's video, um, I was thinking always I always start with my own thoughts on my own journey with the Gothic to actually help you understand better what Gothic is and how it can it apply and how can we actually use it in our everyday lives. So today I want to talk about the hero's journey. Obviously in the Gothic the hero's journey sounds like almost like it shouldn't really be a hero's journey if we have been monsters or we have ghosts if we have doppelgangers so what is it then the the gothic hero's journey does that thing does that even exist as a concept does anybody talk about it and i have to say that i found it really really difficult i found some exercises my own opinions as always as you know but what i want to ask you before we go into the the video the core of the video itself is everybody including you we all have our own personal quest right so what is your life quest what is your journey when you're watching a film when you read a book do you identify with a hero or do you identify with the anti-hero what is your motivation and most of all then how can we connect all with gothic literature well, there are a lot of things that we can connect and to do that, I'm going to use Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey from his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, written in 1949. I'm going to use that because it's something that a lot of people can uh, relate to because a lot of people know about it. You can find it in internet in a lot of places. They talk about The Hero's Journey by Campbell and how what I'm going to do is to show you how the elements of the hero's journey uh, can be applied to the gothic context okay so if you're not familiarized with the with Campbell's hero's journey it's like a clock okay so because it's like it's a circle it's circular and because it's circular we're going to use we're going to talk about it like a clock in, in fact there is a TEDx talk that talks about the video sorry that talks about the hero's journey and it explains all these parts as a clock I have slightly modified it because I don't want to plagiarize anybody but Campbell's journey is there I've just modified it slightly to make it more accurate and more consequent with the with the gothic okay so let's see um, I'm gonna use some examples from gothic literature but also from films and fairy tales because believe it or not a lot of the fairy tales that we take our kids to watch to the cinema or we play at home they have a lot of gothic elements okay we don't have to confuse story with the hero's journey that's another thing yeah there are different types of stories and the hero's journey is a type of story but we can see the element of the hero in different books okay so the first thing is look at this structure so we start with 12 o'clock right this is how we start we start with the 12 o'clock which is what we call the status quo of the hero or our anti-hero yeah think about your monsters too and as we are, we are doing this i want you to think about your own personal experiences in your own personal journeys okay don't forget to do that activity so we start with the status quo here we have think about your own lives we don't have problems we're quite happy we're quite content and this is our starting point there's nothing there yet until at one o'clock something happens what happens we get what we call a call right this call could be a message it could be another character telling us something we find internally a necessity for a quest a necessity to find out we're not happy okay so this call can be different depending on the character and the story we're writing so in Dracula's case the initial call is his necessity to move from his hometown and move to somewhere where he's not known to continue soaking blood 
so therefore he looks for somewhere in London and from there on we have the story also make uh, well I want to make you aware that the film and the book are different but this is for another day okay so now we have the call what is the next step it's two o'clock we are now in the helper in the hero's journey the hero encounters um, the call, it could be that the call is given by a messenger, it could be that it's internal, but in most cases we find a type of mentor. Think about Yoda, right? If you are into these kind of films, Yoda is a very good example. And we can have an accomplice. Normally it's someone who's wiser, who's more, who's got more experience. If you think about The Matrix, which is one of the examples I used recently in another video, for me, in The Matrix, the Oracle is the one that gives new advice. Okay, we could maybe think, well, what, what is the role of, um, you know, the, the, the character that always, that looks for Neo? Um, I've forgotten his name. Exactly, Morpheus. I kind of forgotten, I had a lapsus. So Morpheus is, we could say that maybe Morpheus is also the someone who's wiser, someone who knows more, but is also some kind of the thing that triggers him to start his journey. We could probably discuss this as well. There might be different points of view. Okay, but well for me, it's more the Oracle because the Oracle is the character that actually sets him on the right path. Finally, he takes action or starts resonating, right, this action. Okay, so number three, yeah, three o'clock, we have that our character starts the beginning of the journey. We see this, for example, in The Beauty and the Beast. Don't forget that The Beauty and the Beast is a story, it's a cartoon, it's a story for kids, but it was based on a real book, on a real story written for adults. So both in the cartoon, in the cinema, in the Disney version, and in the book, Belle, she um, she goes on a quest. Why? In order to save her, her father, in order to, to stop the beast from killing the dad, uh, she sacrifices herself and she starts this quest. Okay, so she moves with the beast. At four o'clock, we have the tests. So our hero has to go through a series of tests, or the anti-hero, which are going to put everything in the in extreme situations. So, for example, if we think about Wuthering Heights, Catherine is abducted by the Lintons, and in this process of abduction, while she's living with them, she is trying, or they're trying to uh, turn her into a society lady, and this is what will start everything. Okay, so she's done on this kind of. It's a very strange quest, obviously, because she has to suppress her initial feelings and her wild side to fit in society. Okay, for five o'clock or point number five, we have facing, right? We have the facing the problem, facing the problem, uh, the monster, the thing that we fear. This is quite a, a, a analogy point of the story because is what we we have to confront yeah the, the character the, to to the main fears as i said before so for example in sleepy hollow ikawal crane his greatest fear is the headless horseman and at some point he has to face this horseman and this will take him to the next step which will be the six o'clock breaking point of crisis and then ikawal he will wake up or he will be ill for a while if you think about the film right we have another example in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White, after eating the apple, she falls into a sleep. She falls into a dream. She is there, she bites the poison apple and she goes into this deep sleep. Sorry, I didn't phrase that very well. So here she doesn't really die, but it's a very important point because she's gonna stay like that forever until we get our prince. In case, that's thinking or considering that we get a prince. Maybe we don't, but obviously it's a fairy tale, so we do. Um, seven o'clock, we have compensation, right? So here, think about Snow White again. She gets kissed by the prince and she gets waking up. So 
initially we think that maybe killing the monster will be the compensation and and this will also this will actually apply to happy uh, endings uh, but if the hero is the monster then what happens what is the compensation yeah in, in snow white okay the prince gives her a kiss and he waves a rope so she, she gets her reward by being kissed uh, but then in other cases maybe if we are thinking from the monster's point of view maybe the compensation is freeing yourself from your curse so death could be the compensation revenge or even change of a form unless we have a cursed object that we have like a book that we have to find a, a key a magical element then and, and bear in mind here the magic i've mentioned magic in the gothic mm, we shouldn't really talk about magic because that would be fantasy but we may have an object that is cursed that would be the best way to define it. and then in that case that the, the object is the target um yes i'm not going to mention the lot of the rings because that's fantasy but we have a, a clear target with the ring we need to find out uh, an element like a book normally it's a, it's a book about um uh, spells a book of spells if you think about bewitched if you think about this series uh, they have this book of spells and once they find it they go on another quest okay right nine o'clock the hero goes back to normal life and routine for campbell but if our hero imagine that our hero is a werewolf trying to overcome uh, sorry trying to overcome his curse then maybe um, he might succeed until the next full moon maybe he finds or she finds a solution a kind of potion and then the curse is removed but then that wouldn't be very interesting for us that are watching or reading about werewolves we probably want something more so in this case maybe we get a monster that embraces his his or her nature and what he or she does is to master a better killing next time leave it there 10 o'clock 10 o'clock or step number 10 that would be the rebirth so the hero has changed imagine it's not why she she falls asleep she dies she wakes up she's not the same person can't be uh, maybe the monster has lost his evil powers or her evil her evil powers because we want this person or this monster to be normal but then it will lose all the attractive right so if we think about dracula maybe that's why he has been resuscitated so many times we're not going to remove away his vampiric abilities and qualities and his um, routines uh, but he or she will learn something from the previous adventure from the previous quest and he or she can come back worse with more other techniques to continue with his or her targets which is to buy next right in 11 o'clock or point number 11 we have the ending or the resolution for example if we have a friendly ghost like Casper everything will go back to normality again but if we don't will probably the monster is eradicated if we want to close the story from the, the good the good, good versus evil and good wins but if we think about those stories where the monster actually wins we have examples of abductions i know this is alien but inside the alien there's a lot of gothic right so the alien species like in the invasion of the body snatchers here the monster which is the alien wins because he manages to kill humanity and take over the planet also we think because it's a little bit open you know you always hope for for someone to be left and find a cure and and kill the monster but that's another story right at 12 o'clock we have the status quo again so we start at the beginning on another quest on our normal life but this time the learnings what's happening during the, this time this trip this journey has changed the hero has changed the monster has changed everybody really so in this case um well think about any any story yeah any story we go back to where we started but we have changed think about yourselves when you overcome a problem uh, if a, a health issue for example some illnesses you are not the same your illness has changed you your illness is your monster and that has changed you so you're not going to 
stop there. You're going to have another life quest. You're going to go and, and leave. You're going to have all the things planned to do in the future, but you're not going to be the same. You have changed because your body's changed and your mentality has changed and you have learned. So it's impossible to be static. Okay, right. So these are all the 12 points that uh, Joseph Campbell talks about. And I've tried to give you Gothic examples, but think that you have to bear in mind that this is not something that we can apply to all stories. As I said before, the story and the hero's journey are different things, they are different stories, and the hero's journey is one type of the story. And also think that, for example, we have cases like in Wuthering Heights, the heroine really roams forever the earth like a ghost, as a ghost. So she never really finds peace, which is a thing that reminds me of the Japanese ghost, the vengeful Japanese ghost. Uh, Catherine keeps looking, she keeps she keeps trying to find uh, um, Heathcliff and she's roaming endlessly there forever, end of times. So we can have this kind of open or a ghost without uh, resolution, okay? Um, also, also, um, well, there are other stories where we might not identify, like in, in the picture of Dorian Gray, we might not identify with, um, with the hero because he becomes an anti-hero, but there are some characteristics of this hero, anti-hero, that because he's a human being, we can actually feel connected to and identify. So, you know, in the case of Dorian Gray, he's on the destroy, destroying the portrait, freezes him, um, freezes, freezes him. This is difficult, right? So he he feels free. He's, he moves away from the curse. Okay, right. So just to wrap up, there are twelve steps or twelve hours. Yeah, the twelve hours of a clock. Uh, that make the hero's journey what it is. So if you are writing, you have to take into account these steps if you are writing about a hero's journey. It's the formula that never, um, that goes forever, right? It's, it's always used because it works, because it's been used since the origin of time, since we've been telling stories. So I hope that all this has been helpful for you that you kind of have been thinking about, not just refreshing and remembering some of the books. I, I, you can see I've been using things that are very common and very familiar to all of us uh, in cartoons, in films, and in books. Um, and I want you to have now this thinking. I want you to think the following. So what I want you to think is how all these elements I've, told, I've, I've been talking to you about how and at what point do you feel identify, identified? Um, are you the kind of person that identifies with the monster? Do you identify with the killer of the monster because you don't believe in monsters? So are you the hunter or the haunted? Please leave me the comments and please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to follow me on all my other social media. Remember, I am on Facebook, Alice in Gothic Land. I have a little group there called Gothic Size Me. We are talking about this topic in there as well this week. Uh, I'm putting together very soon, I'm, I, I'm putting together the introduction to Gothic literature. So because I know that some of you still are not sure what that is and how it can help me and how Gothic are you. Um, and well, just in Instagram, I'm recently also posting in Instagram, everywhere I'm Alice in Gothic Land. If you look for me, Alice in Gothic Land, that's where you will find me. And that's it. Thank you very much. Otherwise, I'll go on forever. I'll, I'll just keep repeating myself endlessly. Sorry about this tutoring today and the, a little bit, um, you know, I can't see very well my screen and my printer wasn't working. So I've kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable, but never mind. I hope you have enjoyed it. Leave me your comments, they are very useful. Uh, please let me know if you know what the Gothic is. If you don't know what the Gothic is, very soon you're going to have this free downloadable presentation 
with the slides beautifully put together with uh, the blessing of Tracy Fahey, who's a great writer, an Irish great, uh, an Irish Gothic writer. And I will tell you all more about it. Just keep an eye on this space. Leave me your comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, thumbs up, and keep thinking how Gothic is your journey? How Gothic is your life journey? Which elements have made you thought more about your own journey? How and what and where do you feel identified? Let's do this thinking because critical thinking, my friends, is also very gothic. Okay, so thank you very much. See you next time in Alice in Gothic Land, a place where we talk and we learn about all things gothic. Thank you. Bye.